what we're doing is you're going to be making two through housing joints on either side of this piece of material. So you're going to be making a little small splice rack like this. This is scrap material for practice. You need to take this piece of material to start with. We need to look at how to read dimensions correctly. It's telling you that you need one piece that's 85 millimeters long and then two pieces that are 110 millimeters long. So that again, one piece, 85, two pieces, 110. How do we do that? You're going to need the following pieces of equipment. You're going to need to make sure you've got yourself a pencil, a steel rule, tri square, marking gauge, a tenon saw, a G clamp, either of these two guide boards, chipboard, and a piece of plywood, a beach mallet, and one of these bevel edge chisels. So, first thing I need to do, boys, is mark onto this 85 millimeters. So, see, I'm using 85 here. I'll bring it back into view for the camera. 85, I take my tri square, press that up against this, and draw my line. I leave a small gap, like so, and I go across the edges as well. And then I'm going to cut this. How am I going to cut this? I need my saw and I can use my guides to help me get this done correctly. So I put chipboard at the bottom, like a sandwich. I've got my chipboard here, I've got this here. I open up my G-clamp. I've got to make sure I hold the G-clamp with two hands because they're really heavy, okay? Don't want anyone getting hurt, like that. And I'm going to cut this off, like so. So get a clamp there. Like this, get one cut. So I take the saw, I can use the side of my material as a guide. And I cut this one. Okay. Cut this one and that done. I'm going to move this over and get the next one done. Stand and watch. Move this over and get the next one done. Okay, so you see the speed at which you can actually cut this accurately is based upon how you've got the clamp set up. So I've got the two pieces there and I get the third and final piece really straightforward and getting them set up quickly to be done let's get this last one here just like you would a little sandwich there we go okay the rest of the sizes will be on the drawing get this one here Any scrap material, just go to the scrap material bin, it's just over there by the brown sign saying wood recycling. We're now done with that for the meantime, put this away, and we've got our pieces of material. We we'll mark onto one left hand side, mark onto the other right hand side, and we've got the middle. The drawing's going to tell you what to actually do with these sizes. It says 45 millimeters, then 20. So on my left hand side piece, I'm going to mark 45 millimetres, mark my line, use my square against that, take my piece of material, which I'm hoping is 20 millimetres thick, mark it either side, and draw across. So I've got to make sure I go across the faces and I go down the edges. Okay, across the faces and down the edges. Likewise, on this one, a really easy way of getting one to the other is what's called line transfer. So I just trace them over like this, double check the size. Yep, 45, that's what I need. And mark on to here. So we get this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. <clears throat> and I mark on to them what's the waste material. What's the waste material? I'll take this funny looking tool here. It's called a marking gauge. I set this to half the thickness of the material. Measure the material. The material is 18 millimetres thick, so I'm going to set this to 9 millimetres. That's the distance between the stock and the little spike, 9 millimetres. Tighten this up. Put this material into the vise. Draw a line down this side. Flip it over. Line down this side. Okay. Line them in, line them in, you do the same the other side, just bring it up to the camera so they can see. You've got that one that side, 
this one the other side, and now what we've got to do is to cut them again. So, pop them into here, this over this side, this over this side. Sometimes you may also want to use a slightly smaller block as your guide. I'm using quite big ones just now, but I want to make sure I cut down accurately both these lines. So I get it set up and like so. It can be a wee bit fiddly at times. So that's this one here. I'm going to show you the chiseling as well. That one there. And I want to be cutting so I'm just inside my lines. Cut this side. I can see that side. Have a look this side, mm, not quite. Down to that one. Just slide it along slightly. Get the next one just inside the waistlines. That's what I want. Check this side, check this side. Should be just about there. You can always check it as well with your steel rule. You can check the depth that you've cut down. That would be me just there. Perfect. And now what we do is we come to chisel this out. How do we do that? We take one of these boards and we put it behind here. We take our material, we put our material into the vise so that it's lined up with the top material. We take our chisel. We want a chisel that's going to fit into that gap knuckle side, the slope side of the chisel, and you hold it with your non-writing hand, you take your mallet and you hold that your writing hand, and what I'm going to do, we clear it on the video boys, when you see it, I'm going to cut round this side, this is why it's so important, have your glasses on, and you notice I've cut halfway this way, and I'm going to cut the other halfway other way, <clears throat> so it's the lightest of taps as you're doing this, you notice Stuff's flying off, so really important. Put your glasses on just now. I'm not wearing them. And cut the rest of this out. Quite a few steps for something that's really quite simple. Once you've done the majority of it, cut the rest of it out. So important that your two hands stay behind the blade. None of this. That's why you're going to run and puncture your hands. So that's that one cut out, pop it back into the well of the bench, and it should be snug enough to fit your material, straightforward. <laughs>